No, 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 no. And now a short introduction from the top five power hour representative, Derek the Bunny. Hello, and welcome to this documentary of the world of imagination and shadows with director Henry Selleck. The producers say that to make it perfectly clear, a shadow of an imaginary friend used to be good. Since they have a plan to make a stop motion surreal claymation feature film. Everyone inspires movies in the style of stop motion. Monsieur Henry Selleck has to work in movies, so when it is done in five, four, three, two, and one. <coughs> On January 10th, 1990, it was announced that I would make another stop motion animated film about spirits. But once again, a shadow puppet does not know if the words are supposed to be doing. Boys and girls of every age, would you like to see something strange? Come with us and you will see. Oh no, it's happening. Chapter 1 Similar to the Rankin and Bass holiday specials, the only person who might create his own works of his stop motion films was Henry Selick himself, and he loved his own art. style and filmmaking. I love filmmaking and stop motion puppets and my art style. And I knew just what I, it could work. And ever since I was a little kid, I always knew that I had a hush for my parts. I was born on, on November 15th, 1952 in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. And I knew that I wanted to be an artist. Henry was always fascinated of the world in animation, becoming a great clay animator of stop motion animation. And when he was only four, he went to watch his favorite poems. Yeah that would have inspired
required him to always draw whenever he could. I love watching the Avengers and Prince Act on TV. And I loved Ray Harry Allison's set of voices of Sinbad, and they were both inspired by me to animate my stop motion film. I went to study at Rutgers University, Syracuse University, and Central State College of Arts and Designs. And after that, I joined CalArts to study to see style character animation. That was one of my jobs that I had to work there all day. As a young man at the age of 20, Silic went to work to create his own projects led by animation dog legend Don Bluth, small like the short, like the 1978 animated short to small one, and the animation for Pete's Dragon. I love staying at the scene because everyone came to me, down to me, and said, Oh my god, really? We love you, Henry Selick. I was so excited about it. Henry was amazed. To everyone. I was so amazed to everyone that he wanted to become an animator. He needed to do that. He needed to do what the stop motion animated films were like the Rankin Bass holiday specials. So I'm going to Fear and i on the money trail. Hippity hubby. That would that would have him inspired Henry to be like his own stop motion anime movies, like so. We didn't even know what Henry is doing then actually because this will be the moment that this would be his last day at Disney a few years later in 1981 Henry had his last day at Disney where he had to become a full Ant-Man and the anime featured the Fox in the Hell. Well, I left Disney like an hour ago. I went to do something else. Mm -hmm. I've even made a few projects of my own films. I was known for creating my first animated short, C Page, in 1983. This short, short took six years to make, and when it was, and when it was released, fans even loved my animated short, and I was so loved. Mm. After his animated short was released, Henry would move on to make his own commercials like Pillsbury and Ritz Crackers in 1989. And he went to do his own storyboarding for films like Henry worked on the killer staplers in Twice One Time. 
which was a freaky movie. And it was the strangest movie I've ever seen in my entire The Gnome King dialect in the Return to Oz. That was like a scary movie. The Gnome King was the main antagonist of the picture. Ah, I, I loved it, but I hated it. It was getting on my nerves all night long. And my favorite one is Nutcracker in the Motion Picture, which was which is very similar to Kablooey. That was so scary looking. <laughs> Henry had finally made his own animated IDs like logos for MTV and for, uh, Everyone loves the MTV animated logos I did, and I looked down and saw my very own piece of art on stop motion. One of his favorite commercials of all time was called Mad Doctors of Borneo. It's about a skeleton named Dr. Rishutok, who is the creator of monsters. The skeleton doctor is an evil genius, and he would be so evil that you that he would make his own creative monster. <laughs> it's actually I think in okay, case I'll we'll do another of Done it! And here's chapter two. <laughs> it wasn't until 1990 when Henry and a good friend of his from Disney, Tim Burton, which he got to work on a project of his the Nightmare Before Christmas. This was one of my favorite movies of all time. And here he was known as the ranking best animator of the world of motion. And after the highest soul hit of the Nightmare Before Christmas, Henry went to work on another stop motion game film based on one of the works of Roald Dahl. I want I wanted to make a movie set in the 1950s and it was about a rhinoceros in the storm clouds. I'm who uh, uh, This movie was called James and the Giant Peach, and it was based on one of the works of Roald Dahl himself. Because he want, but because we wanted to make a movie adaptation of the book, James and the Giant Peach will be he very different. I remember one time that it was 
the book that I read. James and the Giant Peach. Then I met Henry Selleck down in 1993, Los Angeles, that I wanted to be like making a movie. Jeffrey Katzenberg is a stereotypical Hollywood movie mogul, and he looks like Spiker and Sponge. The two aunties of James Henry Trotter. James and the Giant Peach was one of the favorite movies that I loved making. But as we all know that it's just going to be a movie. I said, oh my god, we were actually going to make that movie. I was so excited. Mm. In December 1994, Henry and his crew flew to Burbank to complete their models and puppets for James and the Giant Peach, which they wanted to make. I said, we were actually, we were going to make that movie. And I like the little spire in the future family. No one, no one, no one's going to smoosh you. I did my music for you, Tom. No, I can tell you. The, I love doing the music sc musical score in the original songs, and I want to do that right now. Mm. Oh no, oh dear. Henry used to use every scene about the skeleton pirates that they were certainly fighting. And this was the actual part that it was like this and that sort of stuff. Mm. I like the rolling downhill scene. It already made me he shake with fear. He uh, oh, oh, oh. I love the final bell scene about the rhinoceros. This is the This is personally the final one of the scenes. Hey mm, mm. <coughs> mm. Mm. Are you stuck? Yeah, yes, I am. It's okay. Oh, uh, and take your time. James and the Giant Peach was released on April 12th, 1996. And the film went really well with critics saying that James and the Giant Peach had storytelling by Lazar. The film was sanitized. It hit. It was an immediate hit. In fact, Lucy Dolls, Roll Dolls, we know Lucy Dolls said that Roll Doll told a fun story about James and the Giant Peach. And it was reminded of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. As for the box office, it doesn't really look that good. Only making $29 million domestically. Originally, it did get an Oscar for best songs, for best musical score, and it won a top prize at the ASC International Animation Film Festival. I loved James and the Giant Peach, and it was a huge success. I mean, it was great, and I loved it. I saw James and the Giant Peach and it looked gooder than ever. It was going to be like the 
main difference that it has. But just, but just did. Like, but just did, and I did, and I like those scary scenes of it. And we all know that Henry was what was known for making his next big hit. Done it! And now, chapter three. <clears throat> of course, that's my next big project that I was working on. But I, was, I still don't know yet. I was known as the Beef's Butthead creator because we don't know if Henry was doing as of yet. This was Henry's next big movie. Sooner or later, this was apparently still the time we mixed stop motion with live action. I meant one. I mean, I mean, not one of us. That's what. A stop motion live action hybrid feature. That's what looked very, very weird. That's what a stop motion live action hybrid feature. It looked very, very weird to us after all this time. But because if Henry finished off James and the Giant Peach, what would he make a film? Um, about an animation artist with Cartoon Monkey. I love being part of the Harry Potter franchise, and I told Henry to make another stop-motion animated film called Monkey Bone, which is about an animation artist named Stu who loves Monkey Bone, a cartoon monkey that was inspired by Oliver and Company in 1988 and Sandor in 1991. They said to me that I wanted to be the voice of Stu because the cartoon monkey reminds me of Dodger from Oliver and Company in 1988 and Sandora in 1991. Stu is a... Stu is sort of... Stu is sort of like a... like Bill Sykes and Dr. Hatchivish. But when I was too busted on Monkey Bone, I loved playing the kitty and the formed elephant man piano player. He looks like the cockroach from Wally. It always made me laugh. They wanted to be the with the cartoon monkey. And I signed up to do that immediately. Yo! And they were like saying to me that, oh my god, John, you have to make that movie while you voiced the cartoon monkey. So they stuck in the box. The movie about a cartoon monkey was released on February 23rd, 2001, and it was a major disaster, like almost to the point that it was no longer funny. It got pretty bad reviews saying that almost original and pretty visual monkey bone was too shapeless of a movie and failed situations. To always right, the film Monkey Bone became an embarrassing box office bomb. It earned seventy-six dollars worldwide. And by the way, this movie had a budget of over seventy-five million dollars. Basically, just the fact that. Uh, 
big budget movie was released after the new millennium couldn't get eight digits on its box office number it's not even that we don't even laugh or feel sorry for the film Monkey Bone was a terrible movie and will worse it never we all knew if that could be the moment where Henry is walking on next. The problem with Henry, he was that nothing ever happened to his upcoming projects or else. I didn't know if Henry was working on on it. Because it was his first try. My God, I'll never look at scary CGI animation stuff again. Henry met me and said to me that we weren't gonna work on the stop motion on the 2004 film The Life Aquatic with Steve Sissi. Special effects on The Life Aquatic with Steve Sissi were excellent. This it's the first time that Henry saw a CGI animated short. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou was accompanied by an animated short called Animatronic Override, which was about a pretend cat who looks really crazy. Done it! Chapter 4, here I come. <clears throat> I knew a lot about the pretend animatronic cat, and that was clearly CGI animation. And I got myself a new job as a supervising director at the newly established co-founded studio Laika, which was previously Wilfington Studios. Laika Animation looked down on me and they said let's do a little animated film with characters and backgrounds that made in CGI animation. called it Moon Girl in 2005, which was animated for an Oscar, or a Golden Globe, and won 20 awards. Moon Girl was Laika's first animation for Henry Selleck, and the team would know something about CGI and stop motion thus far. But what you want to do is meet up with another... Uh, an, meet up with author Neil Gaiman to turn his chosen book Coraline into a folly. This film about a little girl who explores this film was about a little girl who explores the house and discovers a secret door that takes her to an alternate universe where she has the perfect family, the best neighbors, and an awesome house. I remembered one time when Henry Selick looked down on me and he said, let's try to do an animated feature film about a girl with a big imagination. <clears throat> Something tells me that the book was too small, short to turn it to a 47 minute movie. We extended some parts to me. The movie, the one hour and 47, 40 minute film. And we've got a new character we're calling to interact with YB. <laughs> I love YB Lobat and 
a new character that I have already did with Coraline's friend. <laughs> what? Yeah. This movie was supposed to be a musical with a few more songs written by the band. They might be giants. But then the production was changed to make it more of a darker feature. So he took out all but one of the songs, which is the other father's song that sings on the piano. No need to. We were the only ones. I was playing the role of William Spink, and I was April Foster. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. The only ones. William, put the cap on. Huh? <coughs> I love the awesome house that Coral has got to. And looked good, very good. And I'm gonna give I think perfect I think in the rain. What rain? <coughs> <coughs> This I like. Man, I love the theater scene where Coraline goes into where Sphinx and Force will perform their moves. I voiced Mr. Bobinski in the famous Jumping Mouse Circus. And I loved the mice jumping scene, and the scene was going crazy. <laughs> It's wonderful, why be? <coughs> I voiced the cat who loves to turn mice into rats. He is one of my iconic characters. Oh no, I need to stop. He's one of the circus mice. special effects like the flowers that were made in CGI and the fog was animated and hand drawn and the fog was added digitally and was made with dry eyes. This is the part I voiced the other mother or the bell dam. It, it features a morphing scene of her and this is the first stop motion animated film made in 3D. I'll give you to the count of three. One, two, And this is officially, as of 2015, the longest stop motion film running in 100 minutes. It was a one hour and 40 minute movie. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Goreline was released on in February 6, 2009, and it became a phenomenon. It was an immediate hit and, and received great reviews saying that stop motion combined with the game story. Warline is a film that is both visually stunning and wonderfully entertaining. It almost 
did so well at the box office earning 75 the rest of the end. When I joined if I well, why? This movie would would go on to get nominated for two any awards, including BAFTA a Golden Globe and another Oscar and an Oscar for Best Films Effects, Best Character Design and Best Production Design. I loved Coraline to become a phenomenon. This was a highly successful show of a showdown of a movie for me to create with creepy scenes. Henry had finished Coraline and I would move on to other projects like The Ocean at the End of the Lane, Fortune Lives Milk, and Fortune Lives Milk because I love that so much. <laughs> now chapter 5, final part. <clears throat> Coraline was an immediate hit and after that Henry made a deal with Disney and Pixar to make a few stop motion animated films for them with the theme of making a family horror flick. I made a deal with them and they said to me that let's do two movies that are done with stop motion animation. Henry eventually wanted to make a project called The Shadow King, then followed by a film based on another Neil Gaiman novel, The Graveyard Book. The Shadow King is about an orphan who lives with his brother in NYC, resulting unbelievably large hands who have used shadow puppets that become incredible. One day he encounters a living shadow girl who teaches him to make amazing shadow puppets that come to life, becoming weapons. in a fight against a ravenous monster. Yeah, it also has some had some clips that we've made. Yeah. You heard the world rip you apart. What's wrong with you? Shh. However, when fifty million dollars was spent for the animation test by using the same storytelling capabilities as Coral. It looks very freaky based on most of the artwork. I think we can say that in August 2012. They got all wrong. And so, due to create, and so due to the $50 million budget of the Cherokee, Henry had to leave the company and scrapped his two projects. But don't feel too bad for me. My animation still looks pretty good. I was hired on the spot to direct the graveyard book and release it from development hell because I loved to direct my second movie of all time. Ray out, ring out, ring out, ring out. After the cancellation of the Shadow King, Henry wouldn't make a good deal for Netflix to make his animated feature for Warner Brothers. You said it. He wanted to make a movie about humans and demons. That's exactly what he wanted to make. Went a while. Next. This is it. This is my first Warner Brothers animated film. I'm coming for you. Yeah. This would be the moment that Henry had been worrying for a decade. Wendell Wilde was having co 
producers like Anna Perna Pictures and Monkey Ball Productions. And the film was about humans and humans. The have Earth and Hell. Go down! Mm. Netflix had finally gave us a PG-13 animated movie. A PG-13 animated movie entitled Wendell and Wild Henry Mate. Henry had a delay due to COVID-19. So the film was released in the fall of 2022. Bears a bob. Do we get? Wow. See you, Wendell. We hope you enjoy a safe trip at home and do not compare the world. It's between earth and heaven and hell against us. Enjoy your stay here at Richmond, Virginia. Bye bye. Bye. Chirp, chirp, chirp. See ya. That's all, folks. Goodbye. The end. Yeah. The end.